Art the Clown is back in Terrifier 3, which is now going to be one of my most rewatched movies every single holiday season because this isn't just an awesome horror movie. It's a damn instant Christmas horror classic, and it is hands down the best Terrifier film yet. What's going on, buddy? Welcome back to a brand new movie review. Today, we're going to be discussing Terrifier 3. Now, after surviving Art the Clown's Halloween massacre, Sienna and her brother struggle to rebuild their shattered lives as the holiday season approaches. They try to embrace the Christmas spirit and leave the horrors of the past behind. But however, just when they think they're safe, Art returns determined to turn their holiday cheer into a new nightmare. That's about as much as I can say without getting into spoilers. This will be, of course, a non-spoiler review, but... As you know, with any Terrifier film, you know there's going to be blood. You know there's going to be gore. You know there's going to be absolute gnarly kills. And you know what to expect from Damien Leon, the writer and director of these films. And as for me, like, you guys have never seen me cover Terrifier before on this channel. And that's because I didn't get to watch them until a couple weeks ago. I went back through and watched the first and the second one. And I'd put it off for quite a while because horror is one of those franchises and one of those genres that I love and appreciate, but I have become a little bit of a scaredy cat over the years, and clowns really aren't my cup of tea, and it comes out of brutal kills, sometimes that really is not my cup of tea, but I'm trying to become more of a fan of it. And, you know, one thing that I do really like is watching old school slasher films with my wife. Halloween season, putting on one of the old Halloween movies, or Friday the 13th, or Nightmare on Elm Street, or even Child's Play. Whatever it may be, when it comes down to slashers, we love jumping into those and seeing those kills and seeing how cliche and cheesy that it can be. But I had never watched Terrifier until this year. So we jumped in, I watched the first one, and, you know, for such a small, small, small budget, that movie was a lot of fun. Is it the best thing ever? No, but I can tell what Damien was trying to do with that movie. And it really did remind me of like one of the first times that I'd ever seen Halloween or A Nightmare on Elm Street because you have this charismatic, fun slasher performing all these insane kills in such a minor and small story that never really matters. And, you know, the first Terrifier is fun for what it is, but it lacks that substance and story and mythology that you would appreciate and then you get Terrifier 2, which was crowdfunded, a little bit of a bigger budget, and a lot of people really like this movie. And when I jumped into Terrifier 2, th while I don't think it is a perfect movie, there's a lot of things that I loved in that movie. Specifically, Sienna is like one of the best things that has ever come into the horror genre in like the last decade. And primarily, Art the Clown is one of my favorite slashers now, after watching Terrifier 2. But I found that film to ask a lot of questions provide all this mythology, but no answers. And it's a little too long. Uh, maybe even a little bit is a strong word, but it is too long. Sometimes the pacing drags in a bit in there, but that really much was his director's cut. So cut to Terrifier 3, I was very excited for this movie. I wanted my answers, I wanted more gnarly kills, and I wanted to see what Damien could do with I think about a $2 million budget this time around. And I have to say, as I set off my intro, this is the best one yet. I never found myself bored or not entertained with what was going on in the screen or intrigued with what was going on in the screen. And I found that the characters, specifically Sienna, were, was very much evolved and progressed in a way that surprised me. And I'm very excited to talk about Terrifier 3 today. So thank you so much again for clicking on this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And without further ado, let's dive into my pros. So number one thing I do want to talk about within this is actually the character of Sienna. As I said previously, Lauren Lavera, I, I think, is just one of the best things when it comes down to the final girls. And knowing that you're probably going to get that rematch of her versus art is the buildup of this film. But the thing that really surprised me was taking Sienna's character and showing what happened happened to her after the events of Terrifier 2. And I don't think a lot of horror films pertainly do this right, specifically in like evolving a character past their trauma. And I think what they do with Sienna in here is actually one of the strongest parts about Terrifier 3 and is actually the thing that really had me shocked and surprised with the way and handling a PTSD and trauma. Now, we've seen this trying to be handled a lot in recent memories, specifically in the new Halloween trilogy of seeing where Laurie Strode had gone. And overall, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I think in the first Halloween sequel that they did was fine. 
but later on it just never really progressed the right way and for me the best thing that i can kind of compare terrifier 3 to is it really feels like halloween kills and that's what they were trying to evolve like if that this movie is what i wanted from halloween kills well amazing kills from art the clown but still good progression on our main character and again they do a really great job with sienna in here i was really surprised i was a little worried how they were going to handle it but it really works well it's slow build up on her story and progressively showing this but it really does make you think and feel for her as a character of course, lauren is perfect in this role like she is like top four final girls for me personally and i absolutely can't express that enough she was already amazing in terrifier 2 and the way that terrifier 3 only continues that not just with the progression but there is some badass moments in here it got me hyped I'd say david howard thornton is just perfection as art the clown like when it comes down to like memorable slashers sometimes it does come down to that performance and like one of the most main ones that i think a lot of us always talk about is robert england as freddy i think it's time to say that david deserves that top spot as well right next to robert england specifically in what he brings to art the clown the mannerisms the looks the the creative outlooks and again a lot of that can come of course from direction from damian leon but a lot of that is always in david's performance what's incredible about it is the fact that david is able to express art so well without him saying a single word and i think that's very impressive honest to god i actually think the big stealer of this entire film is samantha scafati which i might be mispronouncing that who plays victoria hayes now of course victoria has been a massive part of the entire terrifier franchise since the first film she had a small little cameo in the second movie specifically in that end credit scene which made us all go what the fuck am i watching right now and terrifier 3 she has a way meatier role and while i still have a lot of questions on certain things victoria might be the mvp of this entire film Again, a lot of that goes to the prosthetics and makeup, but all dives into the creative and what she is able to express under all of that and how she's able to express it. It is wild. It is nasty. It is gritty. And it's fucking awesome. It's gross, too. I mean, speaking about that gnarly and gritty stuff, this movie is gross. It's disgusting. Now, I made the very poor decision of deciding to eat my Cane's fast food in the middle of watching this movie. And there came, like, most of the kills, I like, I'm pretty desensitized to this shit now. But there is one kill towards the back half. That I don't know what it, the fuck it was. It it just it really got under my skin and made me almost throw up a bit. Like genuinely, like I I did not feel good after watching that scene. Everything's gonna hit people a little bit differently, but in the context of how art killed this one person, it was disgusting, and I loved it. A lot of that goes to the kills in here, and what I really think is that while I mentioned that this film is kind of what I wanted from Halloween Kills, the other expressive part about this that I really like about this film is the fact that it really does feel like the perfect mix of what Terrifier 1 got right and Terrifier 2 got right. It expands and gives a very interesting and entertaining story which comes from Damien Leon's script, and at the same time, you're never bored. You're always intrigued to see what's going on, even if it has something to say such on like true crime podcast that is one of the things that it does touch on here and kind of has a satirical outlook on alongside that it has the more gritty and gnarly nature that i feel the first film had and that the second film was a little bit lacking the second film kind of makes art a little bit too playful in my opinion and sometimes the supernatural aspect took away from some of those moments still entertaining but i did appreciate what the first one did with its more gnarly and gritty tone to it and this one kind of has the mix of both. It has some more of the supernatural, but it also has more of the gnarly and gritty aspects of what art is doing. And kind of, again, harkens back more towards Halloween and Friday the 13th and those slashers. While at the same time still giving Art the Clown creative outlooks to not just express himself, but murder a bunch of people. And a lot of that is thankfully because of the Christmas surroundings. You know, you've done Terrifier 1 and Terrifier 2 both taking place around the same time and very much having that same tone to it, 
but always touching into different aspects of horror. Now this time around, since it's taking place around Christmas time, you're able to showcase a lot more to Art the Clown and specifically how he's able to murder people. As you've seen in the trailers and the posters, a lot of the marketing with the Santa Claus suit, he does a lot of jolly fucked up shit there. And again, I loved it. Like that he had that in primarily how the third act goes, which is just fucking amazing. The way this film ends only points this franchise, which they've announced the Terrifier 4, but it points this franchise into going to one direction. And if Damien Leon can point off, like if that's the direction they're going in, it's only going to shift and make this even grander and bigger into the direction that I think some franchises could go in and ruin, but I think in the Terrifier franchise, it is the perfect way to go forward. That's where credit needs to be given to Damien Leon as the director and writer in here who crafted such a perfect mix of both. And honestly, I went into this film thinking, I don't think it can be better than the second one. I'll probably still like it, but I'm hoping that, you know, for something better. I honestly walked away just loving this movie. I didn't expect to. I thought I would just really like it. I liked the first one. I really liked the second one, but I never expected myself to be like, oh, fuck yeah, like Art the Clown, one of the best slashers. Oh my God, Terrifier, one of my favorite new horror things. But this film gave me that mix and I cannot wait to rewatch it. No, I will not be eating when I have to rewatch this one again because the other two, I don't know what it is. I, I didn't think they were bad. I ate food. I was totally fine. This one, it got there. It's nasty. Like, fuck. Comes down to it, there is only one small issue I have with this, and this may bother some. It doesn't bother me as much, like, now knowing and kind of seeing the full picture idea and, like, actually getting to sit on and think about the film. But some people might go into this movie wanting more answers, and I didn't think this film gave as many answers as I, as I was actually, like, wanting. But the film is so entertaining and so intriguing that it was kind of an afterthought by the time I had got to the end of the film. That might be different for some people. Some people might be like, okay, Terrifier 2 gave me all these questions and I still have a lot of questions and you'll leave this film probably with even more questions. But I think that's where the fourth film is set up so perfectly to answer a lot of those. And while some people might look at this as being a filler, it's so entertaining that it's hard for me to go, yeah, like, you know, that ruined the movie. I think it did personally, but you're gonna be the debater on that. Personally, yeah, I would have liked a little bit more mythology, but I think what they added intrigued me and what they kind of answered here and there intrigued me more. And maybe this is the case by case basis with what they give in this is all that they're going to answer. Damien's kind of spoken and said certain things in interviews. So that's going to be a tale for the future because some people don't want to know everything about art. I kind of do because I love mythology, but I'm going on a rambling rant at that point. Fire 3 is easily the best of the franchise and destined to be a holiday classic for horror fans to watch. It's brutal, it's gnarly, it's gritty, and insanely badass. Art has never been more gleeful and creative. The progression that Sienna has in here is brilliant, but Victoria, I think, honestly might steal the show. I love Terrifier 3. It is one of my favorite horror films of this year. Go and support this movie. Go and see it. And I can't wait to see Terrifier 4. So with all that said, I'm going to give this film an A. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.